Next, the guy that the Steelers need to replace. This could be a guy who's a free agent or a guy who is on the team that you think very strongly needs to be gone. Or not even gone, but you need an upgrade. Hmm. I think I think we could go a, a lot of different ways here. Um, okay. Just because I think it fits the the needs of the off season, I think that defensive tackle, like nose tackle, is non negotiable. Like I don't Agreed. think you can run. I don't think you can run it back next year with Montrevious Adams, Tyson Alu Alu. I think Alu Alu yeah. will retire. Um, Adams, if you want to bring him back, I'm cool with that. But I just that's the one position where I'm like. The starter for next year's team's not on this roster, yeah. and I feel very comfortable about that. Um, Miles Jack, I'm not I'm not crazy about that 13 million dollar cap hit. We'll see what they do with that. Um, you know, I, I I think that that's inside linebacker is another position where you could look at that the day one starter for you know that spot might not be on the roster either. And then we've you know we know that they probably need to upgrade either left guard or left tackle. So those two spots are going to be positions where I think the Steelers could upgrade one of those guys, maybe back um, at their spot between Dotson and Moore. Um, the other one will probably be back, but as a depth player and they try to upgrade over those guys. Um, see people saying Devin Bush in the chat. I mean, Bush was benched towards the end of the year. So they were playing a seventh round rookie <laughs> over him. Devin is they not did that anyways. Back. Yeah. They did yeah. That yeah. Themselves. Yeah. I don't have to worry. Yeah. I don't have to worry about that. Devin, Devin's, <laughs> Devin's going to be gone. Uh, best wishes to him elsewhere. And I think like a yeah. change of scenery, a change of scenery will be, um, it's just what he needs. It's what the team needs. It's, this is a fresh break. Um, sometimes when draft picks just don't work out, um, it's best to just cut ties and, you know, hopefully things work out for both sides of it forward. And that's how yeah. I feel about that situation. Yeah. You should never feel poorly about somebody else who's gone somewhere else and succeeding. That's just that they work very hard to yeah, get where they are. To best of luck. Um, I agree with you. I think it's got to be one side of the left side of the offensive line. It's got to be one of the two. Like you can't walk into 2023 and say, this is our offensive line. However, I feel better about that. If that's their decision, than if they walked in and didn't do anything at all, on the defensive line. I, I'm I'm we've talked about the defensive line like four times in this episode. It cannot be pounded hard enough how badly they need to upgrade this defensive line. There's just no way. Like you can't walk into next season and say, just like you said, Monty Adams is a great depth piece, not a starter. Tyson Alowal has got to retire. I think that's pretty evident. DeMarvin Leal is a giant question mark on what the future holds for this guy. And Isaiah Loudermilk was very unimpressive this season. You're just stuck with Cam. You got to upgrade. Like you have to. I don't care what position it is. You got to pick one of them and just say, okay, this is our guy that we're going to go spend a boatload of money or, or not even a boatload of money, but we're going to go, we're going to go make an investment and send somebody out there that we are confident is going to upgrade this line. Have to. Have to. And if that's Larry Ogan Joby, that's cool. Then you got to upgrade nose. But it's got to be, it's got to be one of the two, 100%. You were laughing at something. I'm guessing it was in the chat. <laughs> Some, uh, I was laughing at my guy, my guy Carl. He says, "Still have hopes for JJ Q Vin, Diz Vin Diesel voice <laughs> family." That was pretty funny. Uh, major props to, major props to that comment. Um, I definitely, man. I, I shout out JJ Watt too. Like that, the season oh, that he geez. had uh, to finish his career, man, was so. You don't impressive. do that. You I just mean, don't do that. In the but that's that's what that's what JJ Watt. Um, that's what he's been, man. Like before those injuries started kicking in, I mean, he was this generation's like Reggie White. I mean, I mean, there is no, uh, there's no doubt about it that he's a guy who you just we don't even need to have the, the, the when the when the beat writers get into the room to discuss the Hall of Fame class five years from now. Um, JJ Watts, like, pitch, oh, he's not even his pitch should be about <laughs> ten seconds long. Like, Shouldn't it's JJ been. Watt put him in. Like, we don't yeah. we don't even need to discuss. Uh, no. Nah. They you walk know, in there and it's just like, all right, we have four guys because JJ's already in the hall. Yes, we just need to sharpie, <laughs> sharpie him in. Yeah, we all right. Somebody check this box. That one's for JJ. Thanks. Yeah, hundred percent. The dude is one of the great. It's like so crazy that you know I tell because I'm the oldest brother and I got two younger brothers and I they're not super into football but sometimes they'll like try to get into football mm -hmm. and like. I'll try to tell them about guys and like, they know who JJ Watt is, but like, sometimes I'm like, dude, you don't know who JJ Watt is. Like you didn't realize how crazy JJ Watt was. Like there was a time where it was just JJ Watt. Like JJ Watt was just, he was all the highlights of the Houston Texans for like three years. And it was, it was pretty nuts. It was pretty nuts. So shout out JJ Watt, hundred percent. 